This is Erica Kelly. Welcome to another math video by Fort Bend Tutoring and Mr. Witt. FBT, where personalized math tutoring is the solution. Hello ladies and gentlemen, this is Mr. Witt with Fort Bend Tutoring and today we will be looking at graphing linear equations using an XY chart. Let's dig in. All right. First of all, ladies and gentlemen, when I'm dealing with linear equations, I can use an XY chart in order to graph it. So here is a diagram of an XY chart right there, ladies and gentlemen. So here I'm showing my X values to the left, my Y values to the right, and each pair of numbers, ladies and gentlemen, is an ordered pair. Anytime you're dealing with graphing lines, ladies and gentlemen, plotting on the XY axis, plotting on the rectangular coordinate system, plotting on the Cartesian plane, which by the way is all the same thing, then every point is defined by an X and a Y value, ladies and gentlemen. So that's an ordered pair. So when you're asked for an ordered pair, ladies and gentlemen, they're just asking you for the X and Y values of the points, okay? Your X value goes left to right, and your Y value goes up and down. So let's keep that in mind when we're plotting our values here. In this first example, I'm going to be plotting the points of this XY chart to show you how easy it is. So first of all, I have the first ordered pair, which is 1, 2. So starting at the origin, I'm going to go to the right one, and then up 2, and this will be my first point on the rectangular coordinate system. Mm -hmm. My second point is 0, 0. Well, that's the origin. That's dead center where the x-axis and the y-axis intersect. That's the origin, ladies and gentlemen. Then I have the last point, which is negative 1, negative 2. So I go to the left 1 and then down 2, and that gives me a point here. So connecting these three points, ladies and gentlemen, I end up with my line graphed as you see it there. There it is. For today's lesson, we'll be finding out how to fill in this XY chart and then use it to graph our linear equations. Let's check out problem number one. In problem number one, ladies and gentlemen, I have X minus 2Y equals a 2. When I'm using an XY chart, ladies and gentlemen, it is my preference to go ahead and solve for Y. So what I'll be doing is I'm going to start by subtracting X to both sides here. And I'll be writing it as negative 2y equals to negative x plus 2. And then I'll divide everything by negative 2. And when I divide everything by negative 2 and simplify it, I'll end up with y equals to 1 half x minus 1. All right. So now that I have my equation, 1 half x minus 1, ladies and gentlemen, notice that I have a fraction in front of my variable. Well, this is actually, ladies and gentlemen, going to help me out because if I pay attention to the denominator of that fraction, I'm going to purposely use values for my x here that are going to be multiples of the number 2, that denominator. The reason for doing that is to make sure that I don't have to graph a fraction. I don't want to graph a fraction, ladies and gentlemen. So anytime I have a fraction in my equation, I want to manipulate the values of x to ensure, to guarantee, that I don't end up with a result that's a fraction. So check this out. I'm going to use negative 2, 0, and 4 for my values of x. All right. Plugging those values in, ladies and gentlemen, taking half of negative 2, that's going to be negative 1. And then negative 1 minus 1 gives me a result of negative 2. That's right. Then plugging in 0, ladies and gentlemen, taking half of 0, well, that's still 0. And 0 minus 1 is still negative 1. Showing my work here for the last number here, I would have 1 half times 4 minus 1. Well, half of 4, ladies and gentlemen, is 2, and 2 minus 1 is 1, so that result gives me 1 right here. So that completes my XY chart. I'm purposely, ladies and gentlemen, going to be using three points here because a lot of teachers, like myself, will ask for more than two points in order to graph your line. So if your teacher is requiring that, and also, it's just a good practice to do anyway to make sure that your information is correct is to always have at least three points, ladies and gentlemen. So that's exactly what I'm doing here. So plotting these three points, I'm going to have negative 2 and then going down 2 for that first point of negative 2, negative 2. Then the second ordered pair will be 0, negative 1. So at the origin, I'm going down 1. So that gives me 0, negative 1 on my Cartesian plane. Then my last point is going to be 4, 1, so going to the right four places, and then up 1 gives me this point right here. Now all I have to do is put a line through these three points, ladies and gentlemen, and that gives you the graph of that linear equation.
equation. So once again, the graph of x minus 2y equals a 2, you can generate the points by just making up, that's right, making up the values of x. But I chose on purpose, ladies and gentlemen, to use multiples of 2 because of this denominator right here. Once I solved for y, I saw that I had a denominator of 2 in front of the variable of x, so I used on purpose multiples of 2 to plug in for x so that I did not have to graph a fraction. So that's how you avoid that, ladies and gentlemen. All right, and now let's move on to the next problem. Okay, in our next example, I have y equals to x minus 1. Notice in this equation, ladies and gentlemen, that my variable y is already solved for. All right, so I don't even have to worry about solving for y. It's already done. Exactly. So let me show you my favorite values of x to choose. Remember, it's up to you to pick the values of x. All right. Most equations, ladies and gentlemen, is going to have an infinite domain, meaning that you can choose any value for x you want. But, ladies and gentlemen, I'm lazy. Yeah, that's right. I'm lazy. Why do you think these videos come out so slowly? So that means that I'm going to be choosing small numbers to plug into the equation. OK, so here we are. I'm going to be plugging in negative one. 0 and 1. These are my favorite three numbers to use because they're easy to plug in. Okay, so starting out, ladies and gentlemen, I'll have y equals to negative 1 minus 1. This gives me a value of negative 2 for my y value. That's it, negative 2. Then I'll be plugging in 0. So this gives me y equals to 0 minus 1, which is negative 1. I have my point there, 0, negative 1. Then finally, I'll be plugging in positive 1. This gives me 1 minus 1, which is 0. OK, so my y value is 0 when my x value is 1. So now, ladies and gentlemen, looking at my xy chart, I now have three points that I can plot on my graph. OK, so moving to the left one and then down to will give me a point, negative 1, negative 2. Then I have my next point, 0, negative 1. So I have 0, negative 1, gives me a point right there. And then finally, I have 1, 0. All right, ladies and gentlemen, so that gives me my line on the Cartesian plane. The rectangular coordinate system, that linear equation, y equals to x minus 1, has been graphed. And we did that by making up small numbers to plug into the original equation, ladies and gentlemen. Remember, I'm lazy, so I'm going to use these little numbers to plug in because it's easier to do. I don't have to make my job hard, you know. So there you go. Negative 1, 0, 1, my best friends when plugging in numbers on the xy chart. We have in number three, y equals to four. Well, with this problem, y equals to four, ladies and gentlemen, you should know that anytime you have y equals to a number, we're dealing with a horizontal line. Every single time, ladies and gentlemen, this is a horizontal line. It's a horizontal line. That's right. A horizontal line every single time just because you have it in the format y equals to a number keep that in mind mm-hmm mm-hmm indeed and what this equation is telling me is that no matter what y has to be 4 I don't have a choice I don't get a choice I don't get a choice I don't get a choice when it comes to the y variable y has to be 4 so that means I'm plugging in 4 for my y in all of the order pairs I'm about to create because I can't choose a value for y. There's no need in me solving for it because it's already solved for. y equals 4. Mm-hmm. Just take that in for a sec. You don't get to choose. What I can choose are the values of x because you don't even see an x variable in here, do you? No, no you don't. So we can plug in any value of x we like. So let's do just that. I'm going to choose, what is it? Negative 1. 0 and 1. That's right. Why make this difficult? So those are my favorite buddies to use. The only time I don't use the negative 1, 0, and 1, ladies and gentlemen, is when I have a fraction in the problem. Okay, so with these numbers, you can go wrong. So I'm going to be plotting my first point. Negative 1, 4. Here we are right here. Then I have 0, 4. That's right plotting it right there on the y-axis. Then I have 1, 4, so that means I'm going to the right one, and then up 4 to plot that point. And finally, ladies and gentlemen, putting a line through those three points, I end up with my equation graphed. That's the line. That's my horizontal line, ladies and gentlemen. That's my representation of y equals to 4 using the xy chart. 
And once again, ladies and gentlemen, notice how I'm using three points in order to graph that. So it's always a good practice to do that, ladies and gentlemen, especially if your teacher is requiring it. You want to follow instructions always. All right, that's number three. Let's check out the next problem, shall we? In our next example, I have x plus 2 equals to 0, ladies and gentlemen. In this problem, I don't have the y variable. So what we will do is we will solve for x. So I'm going to start by subtracting 2 to both sides of the equation. So I'm canceling out those 2's right there. I'm bringing down the variable x, bringing down this negative 2, ladies and gentlemen. So my equation is x equals to negative 2. So checking out the format of this, ladies and gentlemen, if I have x equals to a number, that means I'll be dealing with a vertical line. That's right, a vertical line, ladies and gentlemen. That means I'll be going up and down over here, okay? So a vertical line is always going to be the result of an equation that's in the format of x equals to a number. And that's exactly what I have right here. I have x equals to negative 2, x equals to a number. So I already know that I'm going to end up with a vertical line. So notice that this equation says x equals to negative 2. So can I make up values for x in this problem? No, I can't. I have to use x equals a negative 2. Why do I have to use that? Because x equals negative 2, ladies and gentlemen. So therefore, all of my points will have negative 2 for the x value. Mm -hmm. And what am I going to use for my y values, ladies and gentlemen? Yeah. I'm going to use negative 1, 0, and 1. Why make this hard? Mm -hmm. So let's go ahead and plot these three points, shall we? Let's go ahead and plot the negative 2, negative 1. So I'm going to be going two places to the left and then down one place. That gives me my first point right there. Then I have negative 2 and then 0. That gives me a point on the x-axis. In other words, that's my x-intercept. Mm -hmm. Then I'm going to be plotting negative 2, 1. So two places to the left, and then I'm going to go up 1, ladies and gentlemen. And then when I connect these three points, I'll end up with my vertical line, a.k.a. my representation of the equation x plus 2 equals 0, which is the same thing as x equals to negative 2, by the way. And that gives me my answer for that problem, ladies and gentlemen. That's what's up. That's what's up. Yeah, yeah. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, so with that graph, that does it for today's lesson of graphing linear equations using the XY chart. Hopefully you enjoyed this lesson, ladies and gentlemen, and if you would like to comment, please do so. If you would like to rate, please do so. If you would like to subscribe, yeah, please do so. And ladies and gentlemen, as always, continue with your request and go to our Facebook page and like us. Thank you. And if you would like to get involved with the intros and outros for our videos, please send your audio file, your video file, to fbt at tutormemath.net, ladies and gentlemen. It's Mr. Witt with Fort Bend Tutoring saying peace. Thanks for watching. Please rate, comment, and subscribe. Visit our website at www.tutormemath.net.